All right, we're gonna get into some negative masking today. And I'm sitting in front of my computer because we're gonna start this with inkjet masking, where you actually print out on a transparency film density to dodge, or you print out density and leave areas of less density to burn in areas of the negative. And how you do this is you put this above the negative in your negative carrier. I'll show you exactly how I do it, and we'll just uh, jump right in. So there will be a few things that you need in order to do this. Um, you're gonna need a computer. I use Photoshop. You're also gonna need a scanner, and it doesn't have to be a super high quality scanner, but you do have to be able to scan the full negative with the borders. Then you're gonna need uh, some type of printer. I probably would do an inkjet printer and some transparency film. I use this uh, transparency film. It's called, it's from Fixons, and I will leave a link um, in the description below, but I like this stuff because it's it's relatively inexpensive and it does a really great job, especially for um, dodge and burn masks. Then I use an Epson printer, but you could probably use anything that will print on this that will give you some like significant density on the film without smearing or, or watering. So I would probably recommend an inkjet, um, you know, Canon or Epson would probably be fine. So this is a continuation of the series of this print and negative and different ways to enhance local contrast in your prints. Inkjet masking is a really, really powerful way to do this. So the first thing I do is scan the negative. Now I use silver fast. Now you can use, I, I've used Epson software. You don't have to use anything fancy for this. What you do have to make sure you do is make sure you scan this just at 300 dpi because that's what i'm gonna print it out at because we're gonna line this uh the inkjet dodge mask we're gonna line it up with the negative so we need it to be the same size so i'm just gonna scan this as a regular um, transparency and photo quality at 300 dpi and that's what i scanned it at and i just scanned the whole thing um, like this and then i save that to my desktop and what that looks like cropped in Photoshop is right here. So my goal of this mask was to be able to print these clouds with some detail while dodging the arch up and the sky up just a little bit. Now that you see me scribble all over this. So how I approached this was, this is my exact mask right here. If I take this out, you can see I put some density on the arch and these were very quick selections because I want to get in and see how it's working before I go in and really like refine um, the edges and stuff. So what I did was I made a selection of the clouds first. And this is one of the things that I, that's really um, pretty insanely cool about inkjet dodge masks. You can use all the different tools in Photoshop to select areas. Like I use luminosity masks, I use color range, I use the selection tools. For what I did here was I just made a quick selection and I used color range and then I went on the clouds. And I selected some stuff on the clouds here. I hit okay. And I ended up with this mask right here. And if you didn't know you could do this um, in the channels, once I make a selection, if I go up here, so now the clouds are selected. If I go up here and uh, select save selection, I can save this, whatever I want to, as a new channel. And when I save that, if you come over in the layers, channels, paths uh, panel here, under the channels, now the clouds quick, this is the selection that I made, is already over here. So I can reselect this at any time by just hitting the command. And you see it opens up that little, uh, hand with the selection looking thing and if i click on it that reselects my cloud selection so this was a, a quick cloud selection that i made i also did an, a quick arch selection so let me deselect this and to do this one i just use the the quick select tool um, but again you can use any selection methods that you want and then once you have those areas saved or selected just go in uh, select save selection, and then it's super easy to recall them at any time. So once I have those selections made, I went back over to the layers palette. So I'm gonna reselect um, my clouds, go to the layers, and then I'm just gonna kind of redo this so you can see how I made this. So then I made a new blank layer, 
And because I have the clouds selected, I want to fill everything but the clouds with black. So I'm gonna invert that selection and the quick keys on a Mac are Shift Command I. And then I simply hit the D key and that's gonna reset this uh, from any other colors. It's gonna set the foreground color to black and the background to white. And then I hit Alt Delete. And so what that did was very quickly gave me a mask around the clouds and it made everything black. So I don't want to print this 100% black. That's not really gonna help me. But I can decrease this layer opacity. And that way I can make a mask with different densities that's gonna dodge out the arch in the sky and essentially burn in the clouds. So what I have done and what I would recommend you do is I made a test chart like this. And this has different densities in it. So if I find my 5% over here, what you'll see is that, so I labeled this 5%, I labeled that 5%. My opacity, in the opacity here, it's at 5%. If I go on the 10%, the opacity is at 10%. 15%, 15%. So what I have done is I have made a preset for my printer that I am gonna print everything at. Um, and it, it, it doesn't make a huge difference what you do, just be consistent with it. Because I wanna know that, that this density, if I have a 25% opacity, when I print it on that film through that printer, I want it to be the same as what I tested it on. So, once I've printed this out, I went ahead and measured these on my densitometer. And now I've charted it on my iPad. So I know that 17% opacity is gonna give me roughly a quarter stop. So if I wanted a quarter stop dodge on the sky and the arch, right here I would put this at roughly 17% and so on. 31% give me about a half stop, 41, three quarter stop, uh, 48, a full stop. So it's not necessarily, it's not very linear the way the, the ink blocks the light, but if you chart it out, you'll kind of know how much light you're blocking and that can really help. Now, if you don't have a densitometer, um, I would just print this out and make a, a contact sheet on the paper that you're gonna be using and that will give you a general idea and you'll be able to gauge, okay? You'll be able to see from one density to the next, ink density to the next, and how that's kind of going to affect your actual exposure. That's how I would kind of approach it so you're not just completely flying blind. Because there's one thing I can tell you with making these negatives, uh, inkjet dodge masks for your negatives, is that this can be like extremely time consuming and it's not the easiest thing to figure out. It seems like it would be really straightforward, but you're gonna kind of be coming back to the computer and retweaking things. And so if you have some kind of gauge of what's like going on, it's, it's really gonna help you in the long run. Now, the other thing you'll notice is I put some magenta in here and I put magenta, um, I made a magenta layer on the sky and on just the arch. And I left the magenta out of the clouds. And now by doing this, essentially I can print the clouds. This is kind of using variable contrast or split grade printing again. So the clouds are gonna be printed at a lower contrast and the sky is the sky and the arch are gonna be a little bit higher contrast because the magenta is gonna enhance the contrast in those areas. So what that's gonna allow me to do is actually print the negative with the mask on at a lower contrast grade and it's gonna keep the contrast higher for the arch in the sky. So I can actually lower the contrast of the clouds and increase the contrast. And you can do vice versa. And I could have put yellow over the clouds, but that magenta layer is gonna add some density too. And because I'm trying to burn down the clouds or dodge up the other parts, it would make sense to approach it this way. One thing I would also recommend is to definitely have a print made unmasked. And you're, cause you, first of all, you're gonna wanna kinda judge where you're gonna want to dodge and burn and that's gonna help you kind of make your mask in the first place. Plus you're gonna want a before and after to see what is actually going on with your mask. 
So the next step you're gonna wanna do is set up a document at eight and a half by 11 uh, standard size at 300 DPI or the same DPI that you scan this at. Like I said, you're trying to make this negative line up with, or this inkjet dodge mask line up with your negative. So for this, it's just an eight and a half by 11 new document, 300 DPI. And what I have on this document are corner marks. This is gonna help you align the dodge mask with the negative. So you can see I have six by nine, I have four by five, I have six by six. What I'm gonna do is, I already have it over here because I was just printing it, but the original document, I'm gonna take the folder that I have all my stuff in and I'll even drag the image in there so that's in there. So then I have all these in one folder and I'm just gonna take this, hit the V key, drag this over, hit the shift key, it's gonna dump it in the in the middle. And then I'm gonna come up here and it's gonna be underneath, this might be a little bit hard to see, it's gonna be underneath these crop marks. So what you're gonna end up with is, I already have it here. So if you look in close, I have these crop marks. You see the upper right, upper right. So I have them labeled in a folder so that I can move them around independently if I need to. But what you want to do is make little marks on the corners. What that's gonna allow you to do is line this up better. So this is what I'm actually gonna print right here. And these crop marks will print and those lined up with the edges of my negative perfectly. So that is gonna be really helpful when it comes to actually lining this up. Now I'm just gonna take and print it and I'm gonna go file print like I said I have a uh, inkjet dodge mask preset and I can go through the settings but it's not it doesn't matter too much so the printer option uh, printer settings I have I do have it on super photo I have the high speed turned off because it's a, a transparency so you're gonna want to let that dry but we're not laying down like a ton of ink on this thing. So it, like I said, you can pretty much get away with most settings, just be consistent. But I use the matte photo black, um, the ultimate uh, ultra premium presentation matte, uh, the print mode AccuPhoto HD. So this is just a preset I have set up. This is how I printed my test prints and this is how I print all of them because I know what density is and how much light they're gonna hold back under my enlarger. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit print, uh, proceed. From there, I will cut it and I will align it with my negative on a light table. And now one of the caveats or, or issues that can happen with this from scanner to output on your printer is the dimensions might be slightly skewed or slightly off. So when things don't quite line up right, and I usually have to adjust mine about like 2% or so up, I like to have the actual negative scan visible when I do this and everything is in this folder. So why I like to have that visible is because when you lay it down on the light table, you'll kind of see like how, how much it's off. And this will give you a visual. So if I zoom in here, this will give you a visual on, you can kind of guesstimate and it, it'll get you really close. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna grab this whole folder, hit Command T or go into the image transform and that is just gonna transform this folder or these layers. Then I'm gonna come up here on the height and I'm gonna go 102. And as soon as I hit 102, I didn't even, it's not even finished yet, but it gives me a preview of where, so if I was off about this much, or, or say that's, maybe that's too much, I can go 101. So if I was off about this much, that's, I could hit enter and then it would expand it that much. And then I would just move those crop marks back up a little bit. So here, let me, so I would hit enter. And now you can see, and sorry, this is hard to see here. Let me change the color of these corner marks. Okay, hopefully that's easier to see now. So now you can see those corner marks are uh, a little bit down so now I'm, in, I'm just gonna move them up so if I come in here I have these these and these I just made with the line tool and so there's a line and a line so you can see the lower left here let's do the upper upper one because that's what we're gonna be working on so if I go to the upper right so this is just two lines 
and then I have them in their own folder. So if I select on the upper right and I select on the upper left, hold the shift key, and then I just use the arrow key, I can now I can nudge these up. And now I can try that again if, if it didn't align the first time. Like I said, my, I usually have to, for some reason the height, you know, somewhere in the process, it just gets a little bit off and you gotta kind of like nudge it back on and, and that will get you to where you need to go. Now that we have our inkjet dodge mask printed out, I trim with the scissors around it. Um, and I try and make the, the uh, trim mark on the bottom as straight as I can. Because what I do is I use a, a pin registration system. So once I have a mask that I like and it's final, I will actually put a leader on it and that way I can re-register it without any problems. I use uh, Lynn Radeca's uh, pin registration system and I, th I think it's great and it's really good because you can put it back in the enlarger um, in the exact position as well. So it's registered t two ways. For this type of masking, it's completely not necessary. And in fact, I'm going to make a video showing you a really simple way of making just a pin registered um, carrier for making like unsharp masks and dodge and burn masks. I think that's gonna be the next video coming out because I've already filmed it. You can, you can get away without the pins altogether. Like you can just tape this on top and it will work just fine. But how I do it is I like once I have it done nicely and I have a mask that I like, I like to be able to just put it back on there in register without having to go through the, the hassle of you know aligning it every single time. You want to have a piece of diffusion material between the negative and your mask. When you are printing with inkjet, it puts those little dots down. You don't want those showing up in the print. So what the diffusion material is gonna do, it's gonna diffuse that out and just make it more even density. Now I use these these sheets, uh, I forget exactly what they're called, but I did get them off of Amazon super cheap and they work really good. Now I have it cut and punched so that I can put it in that negative carrier as well. But what I like about these is this one is, is almost exactly one stop in density so it's really easy to kind of figure out your exposures with this in there and without it it's a little more than a stop but it's pretty close but you're going to need some type of uh, diffusion material and then you're going to put that down on the light table and what i do is i take two pieces of lithographer's tape and tape the edges of the inkjet dodge mask and then i use a loop to align everything first i start with those square uh, uh, registration marks that we put on the corners but then i look in really close especially on a negative like this where there is like hard lines on the arch that we're trying to kind of dodge out a little bit you want to make sure that those are really, really precise. So I just use a loop and look around and then I just tape it down once I have it aligned. Then I just fold the carrier over and I don't make the, red again, I don't make the registration um, leader on the bottom until I know that I'm happy with this. So then I just put that on and I go ahead and make a print and see how it turns out. This is a straight print without the mask. And I actually printed the one with the mask first and then just took the mask off and printed it without because I've already done a ton of prints with without the mask on. I've been working on this negative for, for quite a while now, trying to get these clouds you know, in, in a, a position to where I like them. So you can see how powerful this can be, not only with getting really precise areas of, of dodging and burning, but also with using a method of split grade contrast in the same same negative by adding colors into the mask. Now inevitably you will have to come back to the computer and refine these things. I think what what I would recommend is that you make an adjustment and then make a print. Make an adjustment. Make sure you're kind of taking notes and in, in either snapshots or, or, or putting your settings down because it's really easy to lose track of what you've done or what this mask has or what, what that mask has. And you're gonna wanna make sure you have a good system in place or notes to kind of like get you to where you wanna go. This is so powerful and it can be really, really exciting, but it's also very time consuming. And to do a really good job, you do need to take the time, spend the time to do it. That's just a forewarning. And the other thing I would say is, you know, I, I usually go into the dark room to get off of the computer and this sucks me back onto the computer and out of the darkroom. So there is that going on too. And 
but for some things, this just works so much better than any others. Um, so that's my own little rant on it. This also does not make up for um, taking good pictures and having proper exposure and development. I know I'm kind of a hypocrite for saying it with this particular negative, but you should strive to have good negatives and you should also strive to learn how to use all the tools. This isn't a be all end all, it's very powerful. But what you're going to want and what I usually do is I will use a mask like this and then incorporate it into the other uh, tools that I'm kind of showing you in this little series. So I really do hope you found this helpful. I've had quite a few questions um, on masking in the past and I never really wanted to get into it too much because like I said, I think it's very important for people to have like a foundation of printing skills before they jump into something like this but this is pretty cool stuff once i once i kind of run through all these different methods of local contrast control i will make a final print with this negative and i probably won't use all these different things and if i do it will definitely be a combination of so i will keep moving forward with that and we will see you next time